Okay, ready? Okay. After six, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome to the November 14th um, Board of Selectmen meeting, both for the convenience meeting, um, a little bit after six, well, just about six. Um, I guess we'll take up the building projects and implications for financial management. We have David Isaacall and Linda Anderson here to go over things with us. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. And the show is yours. Um, as uh, we understand it, we're looking at the borrowing for potentially all three projects beginning this spring. Um, it was uh, when we first talked about this a uh, few years back and we had a borrowing plan. I, it wasn't at that time contemplated that all three would be beginning in the very same season, but that's what we're at. And it's presented some set of challenges as to whether we are going to, um, if, if that's what you decide to do, how we are going to do the financing that might be different than what we originally intended. Now, the parameters are uh, still trying to manage that annual impact on the tax rate that was promised when we first went through. And it looks like we, you know, we're, we're, that is definitely something that we're keeping, uh, keeping in the plan. And uh, we have worked with uh, David Eisenthal uh, closely over the last uh, few weeks. He's our financial advisor with the Bank Financial Services. And um, to try and decide how, we, how and when we are going to do the borrowing for these projects based on two scenarios. One is whether we are going to continue the, uh, with the plan, the original plan, which was finish the senior center and then begin the library, which would put the library about a year further out than if they were to begin at the same time. I know there's other factors for you to consider, but our, our role then is to, to see can that be managed and how would we manage if we were to bar be borrowing um, and have the library begin in March, April, May, that uh, time frame with the other buildings. And so I don't know that I will hand it over to David Eisenthal. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Thank you. Members of the board. Um, the treasurer, Linda, and the town administrator, David, requested that I prepare some updated financing models for the major capital projects as well as the smaller equipment renovation and other capital purposes. Um, and I'll point out that the town has $2.76 million worth of notes coming due on March 15th, which is a key date in all of this. Uh, and uh, as Linda indicated, the town is looking to mobilize on the fire station, senior center, and perhaps the library within the next six months. Um, and we understand that part of the decision-making process tonight or in the next few weeks is the timing of the library project. So we produced five models. Um, the, what we call 1A is uh, bonds for major and minor purposes in June of 2019, assuming a slower library uh, project. 1B is bonds for major and minor purposes June of 19, faster library. 2A is bonds uh, just for the major and other long-term issues, um, leaving the smaller equipment items to be financed uh, short-term, assuming a slow library. Uh, model 2B is uh, doing the same thing, only assuming a faster track for the library. And then the final one, 3A, is uh, bonds in 2019. Uh, with, uh, uh, the, uh, with a faster track library. All of these assume uh, that the town would issue additional short-term notes next month, December of 2018, for the fire and um, uh, senior center. Uh, although, as it will become evident, it becomes more important with a faster library project that this uh, proceed. Uh, it also assumes uh, short-term notes in January 2020 and uh, bonds in January of 2021. So two bond issues, June of 19 and January of 2021 is what we're assuming at this point. The considerations here, uh, the most important one is cash flow for the projects. Um, we wanted to make sure that whatever models we presented would provide sufficient cash flow for the projects to proceed. Meeting the debt service impacts that have been discussed uh, over the last few years. 
um, particularly for the debt exclusions. Um, the changing interest rate environment, looking at what we're uh, expecting as far as uh, rates on short and long-term borrowing. And then there were some technical issues, trying to stay, uh, keep the borrowing under $10 million uh, for each of the calendar years. That's one reason we're looking at a short-term borrowing in December 2018 uh, to free up capacity in 2019. Generally, this produces lower rates, other things being equal, and would give the town a little bit more flexibility if other uh, items, other smaller equipment items, for example, are authorized by the town meeting. Um, the other issue, technical issue, that we had to pay attention to was complying with state law requirements relative to the repayment of principal, both when it starts, which is within the fiscal year following the date of issuance for bonds, and then we have to, we would have to be amortizing, paying back the principal at least as fast as level debt service, or at least as fast as a mortgage. That doesn't need, mean you have to pay uh, level all of the time, but the net effect over 30 years has to be like a mortgage, basically. So those, that's how we approach this. Now, um, in discussing this with the town administrator and the treasurer, models 1B and 3A, we kind of dismissed those. We felt that 1B is, again, that's, the, that's doing bonds for all of the purposes, assuming a faster library project. We felt that the overall and annual cost impacts would not justify, if the library project is faster, doing a bond issue for basically everything that's outstanding and then a good chunk of everything else in June of 19 would not be justified. 3A is delaying the first bond issue to December of 2019. Given what we think are increasing interest rate environment, the in increasing interest rate environment, we didn't feel that that would be justified either. So we're really looking at um, if the <coughs> library proceeds more slowly, we will look at models 1A or 2A uh, and there may be some, if the, if the project, um, well, we may look at uh, opportunities to refine the repayment of principal on the smaller items to produce even a more um, smooth uh, tax rate impact over time. If the library reads, proceeds faster, Model 2B would be the likely focus. Uh, and again, we would refine the pay downs in future years. Um, and uh, try to get that, try to get some of those years to be a little lower than what we're showing here. But uh, I think that's probably how we would look to proceed would be that model to be. Um, now, I will comment in terms of the financial effects of a faster library project. Um, I don't think there's a, basically a huge impact. The, uh, there would be larger borrowing short term in, 20, in the end of calendar 2018 and during 2019. Um, and that's the, the effect of that is somewhat offset by the fact that the rates are expected to be lower earlier. Um, it also, if the library goes faster, it will be paid off faster. The last payment we're projecting on a slower library project is the year 2050. If it's, uh, if with a faster library project, the last payment would be in 2049. Not a huge difference, but just enough to kind of offset uh, what would be some additional uh, financing costs associated with a faster library project, assuming based on the uh, what we would just I won't even be alive by then for that. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these years, you think you look ahead, it's uh, oh my god, quite remarkable, but that's only 30 years. What I'm leaving time. everybody, huh? Oh lord, <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. Think about it, yeah, 30 years on your life there. The important thing is, will the fire station, senior center, and library be here in 30 years? There that's you what go. Gotta so be. That's what you're leaving. <laughs> yeah. So I guess the one last thing I'll comment on is that um, not knowing how you as the board, <laughs> Madam Chair, want to proceed, uh, we want to... Um, 
have the option, if you do decide to proceed with a faster library project, to proceed with a short-term note of approximately $2.6 million. Um, and uh, we would be notifying uh, the banks on the 29th of November. Uh, Linda would take bids on the 6th of December. Uh, you would be meeting and signing the note and other documents on December 12th, and settlement would be December 19th. Uh, those notes would mature in July and would be permanently financed with that June of 2019 What's fund issue. You can give me all these numbers, but what is the rate that we're going to be locked in at? Well, for this short-term note, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere in the high twos. Um, looking for June of, uh, for a 30-year bond issue in June, we're projecting somewhere a little uh, above 4%. And uh, for the June of tw for the January of 21 issue, I think we're around four and a half percent is what the projection is. All of these rates are projections subject to change, but that's what so. Is the two percent on the 2.6? That's on the 2.6. That would be in December. 2.75 is actually what we're yeah. projecting for that rate. David, could you talk? <coughs> it's too bad we didn't do what Brian West wanted to do several years ago and just take out ten million then, huh? When it was one percent. When it was one percent, yeah. Remember that. Just keep it in the cash. Remember I Brian remember doing that? that? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Um, can you, you touched on it a little bit, but I'm just, so with the slower versus faster library modeling, um, borrowing capacity. Well, the capacity with respect to bank qualification, mm -hmm. um, which is not, you know, it would not be a tragedy for the town if the uh, town issued not bank qualified, which then I'll explain bank qualification is a provision of the Tax Reform Act of 1986, which says that issuers that issue tax exempt securities of $10 million or less in a calendar year get uh, the benefit of well, or the purchasers of those securities get this benefit of special ta of tax treatment, a different tax treatment that benefits the issuers with lower interest rates. Um, the importance actually for Hadley of bank qualification is that um, as a typical way of doing business, the town issues relatively small amounts of notes through the state house, uh, state house notes you know, can be less than a million or maybe more than a million. It's, it's accumulated to be a little more than that recently. But um, if town meeting, you know, if, if for some reason the town uh, wanted to borrow, say, $400,000 and wanted to go, you know, solicit bids from ESB, Bank ESB and Greenfield Cooperative and Greenfield Savings, <coughs> if the town were not bank qualified in a given year, it would be harder to get economic rates from those banks for those small borrowings. So that's that's one reason that if we can keep um, bank qualification, that would be uh, justified. You know, if the, and I was saying to David and Linda before, if the, the way that the, if the statutes were different here, um, it might make sense, although I think if 10 million several years ago would have run into various problems, but uh, if the statutes were different, a $16 million bond issue in June could make sense. The reason it's not so much the bank qualification, it's the fact that we don't want to have that impact all hitting the town in 20. Right. So that's one reason we're looking at an, an issue in yeah, impact, 19. You're referring to the tax rate. Tax rate, yeah. yes. Uh, June of 19, January of 21, we don't want to hit all at once. And that's because under the Mass General Laws, Bonds, the first payment of principal has to happen in the year following, fiscal year following mm -hmm. issuance. So for the 19 bonds, it's fiscal 20. For the 21 bonds, it'll be 22. In other states with where I do business, three it's three years, mm -hmm. five years. If you had that kind of flexibility, we might look at a $16 million issue and kind of say, well, we don't need the flexibility. We're gonna, gr we're gonna grab a good rate on the financing because we'd be able to manage the impact a little bit more to where uh, we would like it to be for the taxpayers of Hadley. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope that that's, uh, I'm sort of meandering around. But no, that, that's yeah, the, the that's part of it. And then the, the other part I'm just trying to get at too is let's say, God forbid, we wind up with um, the need for an emergency borrowing. 
management infrastructure issue. Something like that happens um, that we're not anticipating. Is either scenario giving us more leeway to absorb something like that? Uh, doing the $2.6 million borrowing next month definitely gives you more flexibility if something comes up during calendar year 19. I think that's a good idea just because of some of the other reasons we talked about getting things moving financially. But the 2.6 million is only going to be if we had fa if we fast forward the library. Probably, although we were looking at that even if the library wasn't. I'm just saying, what's the downside of doing it regardless of? We project? borrowed it three months earlier, and so we're and, and not using it. So we have um, principal that we. We're carrying the interest payment next year we'll, that we may pay back will have been for three months longer than it would have needed to be. Yeah, so three months of interest. Three months of interest, um, which we'd eventually be paying, but we, you know, we'd see. That's why. Yeah, I want it, the. Um, I, I just I'm not sure it was clear that the, the 2.6 million that we would be borrowing would be, um, even though we're sort of. It's, Tying this to the decision about the library, that wouldn't be library borrowing. It's just a the, the impact of the library happening in 2019 necessitates us, us um, you know, the, our looking at this possibility of borrowing earlier. But the borrowing would be for the things already uh, would be for the senior center, um, assuming that uh, is squared away next week, and the and to get going on the fire station. Mm -hmm. So it would be for those two projects because the library. Is um, gets its start from the grant payments. Yeah. We have already had one seven hundred eighty thousand dollar grant payment, and we have another one that comes in. It's February or March, as I recall from last year, and that comes in for five years. We get the seven hundred eighty thousand dollar grant. So we get going with those. We don't actually need to borrow mm -hmm. and uh, borrow for the library until um, until a little bit later. So how long or how far along does that get us with the senior center and the fire station as far as the 2.6 or how much, uh, what phase of the project right. will that take us through? It takes care of the um, senior this center school. and the fire station through the rest of this fiscal year, which includes um, two to three months of construction, includes them starting at the timeline that they say that they needed. Um, the fire station um, was set to begin, um, if all goes well, they'll be beginning on May, May. 1st. So we took, this takes care of finishing up the, uh, the, des the design cost, the preliminary cost, and two months of, of construction. So that would be for May and June. Um, let's see, which one starts May 1st? March 1st would be Senior Center, senior 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 center, center March 1st. So if, so if we were going to, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but if we we're going to accelerate the projects and do both of them at the same time, would we have the money? Which projects? The library, the library and the senior oh. center, where we have the money to demolish the hooker school, and where, where's that funding coming We would be doing more March. borrowing in March. More borrowing in March. Okay. And actually, there's going to be more borrowing in March in any case. Um, right. I think that the, the idea of doing the December borrowing would be that it would allow the March borrowing to stay under three million, which would be easier to do through the state house rather than uh, with a more complicated disclosure document, legal opinion from bond council. Um, so that, that would be one reason to do the December issue, regardless of how fast the library goes. But certainly if the library goes faster, it would be uh, even uh, better for the town to proceed with that December notice. Okay. Mm -hmm. David, we touched upon it in our conversations, but we didn't uh, dwell upon it. Uh, bond rating, would we have to re-up our bond rating? Um, the, with a $6 million, I think we would be looking at possibly doing this uh, with a faster um, library for the March ban issue possibly then, certainly in June of 19, we would be requesting another rating from S&P Global Ratings. So possibly March, definitely June would be the, the answer. And is there anything here that is detrimental to the bond rating? Shouldn't be. 
I don't think that the amount of debt we're talking about, given the size of the tax base, um, other factors, would be a major concern. Mm -hmm. But as we move forward, we will keep an eye on that, especially as we get closer to a fiscal 2018 audit. Um, we'll get what those results look like. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be locking into any long-term rate then according to the schedule until June of 2019? Correct. Right, okay. And that's for the substation? Okay. Yeah, there would be um, fire, subs fire substation, senior. the senior mm -hmm. part of the senior center, and then mm -hmm. the HVAC projects, the land acquisition for the fire station, and um, I think those, are the main, those would be the major items included in that bond issue. I thought we already had paid for the land acquisition. Uh, the, that's out as bond anticipation notes. That's actually the bonds to point. It's converting it to, yeah. Okay. So you would convert it all into one? Yeah, that would be a rollover. Okay. So you just need to convince the Fed then that the, yeah, there's some signs of potential weakness in the economy so that they don't get too... Well, he's going to get right out. <laughs> 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 That's, That's why we came with a big fact. James. Yeah, so if you see the interest rates going up, which is a potential, would you change your borrowing schedule? Once we get into a bond, uh, we're still looking at a bond under 2B for June. Right. I mean, I think that that's, um, the idea is that we're going as fast as practicable here with as much of the issue as we can, given the fact that I think it's a likely that interest rates are going to increase. Um, I believe that when we initially did the charts back when we were having these buildings approved, that I think you were using a 5% That's right. interest rate mm -hmm. for, the, the for, for the $95, yeah. uh, for those particular what was on the table at that time. We were mm -hmm. using 5% at to be conservative, knowing this was going to be a few years out. So that's why we're still able to stay within those parameters. Um, we were hoping for three. <laughs> well, I think that's Maybe a year ago. <laughs> David Stumas before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so 2B, is that the one that borrows the largest amount the, the soonest? Is that what we're looking at? That's the well, it, so what it does is that it um, just, f for the bond issue in June, it just does the fire senior center, not all of those projects, but a substantial portion of those projects, uh, plus the land for the fire, uh, HVAC, uh, and maybe some other projects. What it does is that it leaves the equipment purchases in short-term debt, which I believe that um, the uh, administration of the town, the town administrator and the treasurer, like the idea of the flexibility to be able to pay down uh, the, the principal um, flex more flexibly than would be the case with a bond issue. A bond issue, would, you would be locked into set principal payments over time. I think they like the idea of, depending on what resources look like in a given year, being able to either increase or decrease uh, the uh, payment of principal. Right. If, if you look down, the, um, the second page of each of these is a, the debt exclusion chart itself. And you, you look in the final column of what's being paid, you see it goes up, it goes down. So it doesn't, it's just not just a steady, a steady down. And so we would be using the, the band payments as a way of smoothing that out. So we pay a little bit more in the lower years, and we maybe hold back on the low, as long as we're, you know, keeping an eye on making sure that we uh, get them paid off uh, each of the items within the, their own time frame. Once, once we so, uh, so we like to keep those out so that we have that. If we put everything into a bond, then we're stuck with that payment. Not stuck with it. I mean, if it's good, if it's a better interest rate, it's also a good deal. But um, it will have a fluctuating impact on the tax. One thing I'll point out, just to make sure that this is clear, uh, and I think that one reason that we're structuring things this way is to make the tax rate setting process for this year a little bit easier. The bans uh, that would be taken out in June actually mature in July. So 
so mm -hmm. those won't be raised until the fiscal 2020 tax rate. But you'll still have, on the 2020 bond issue, you will have to pay a first principal payment in 2020. So there's a little bit of an additional cost, but it does simplify the tax rate. Rather than having those bands come due in June, where you would have to make an estimate as you're setting your tax rate now uh, for 2019, by doing by having the bands come due in July, this uh, simplifies that part yeah. of the process. And you had said that before. Yeah. I okay. remember you saying that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I really don't see a downside. No, I think uh, the rates are only going to go up, and I think that the, the, the quicker we can get moving on this, the less chance we have of things popping up that mm -hmm. cause issues. And then, um, as long as we can keep the tax rate as promised. Yep. Um, and uh, it more or less is. <laughs> And I'll, I'll, I'll say it. I'll say it that way. We had that nine, that uh, amount that we said that it would uh, that it would stay uh, the increase above the 2007 rates. And uh, with some smoothing out, I think it will it will be there. But that 95, you have to realize, didn't include the extra amount that we put in for the fire station. It's right. not going to include the vote that we have next month on the new. Every time the town goes back and votes to, for another, something else. Yeah. Right. Um, it, that that's going that's to be an addition yeah. to it. Yeah. So uh, again, in that last column, what I have in mind is you know, the goal for under our uh, un including our buildings and everything voted to date is you know to keep it about one million one hundred seventy five thousand, and then um, if you know that goes up, obviously if uh, if we and w which are factored in are the new items if they pass that will bring the amount up thirty thousand and um, so uh, it changes what we're working with, but. That is that does absolutely continue. It's not something that started for a couple of years and thought well, maybe they'll forget. <laughs> no, um, we are definitely trying to you know stay within those parameters. And just so just to kind of in a, in a nutshell, then um, the decision on whether or not to to accelerate the construction of the, the library, as you know, there there are many many considerations on that. Financing was a huge one because it was a potential no go. Right. I mean depending on what you came back with. So I, mean, I think what I'm hearing you say is that you have a scenario that regardless of the decision at this point, from a, from a funding standpoint, you can make it happen. There's not a huge difference between a faster and a slower right. library project from, on a financing, from a financing perspective. But we, we're not going to pay on it yet on the library if you fast-tracked it right now? The first interest payment on the library, if you fast-track it, will be in fiscal 20. Be, there will be an interest payment on bans that would be issued in March um, to, you know, that would be, it would be necessary to borrow whether, and the, whether it's two and a half or three or three and a half million dollars in March, uh, there would be a need if the library is fast-tracked to borrow some amount and the current plan would be to have those notes come due in January of 2020, mm -hmm. fiscal year 20. So the, the real financial impact, and again, this isn't necessarily proven, but it's a key talking point of accelerating the project, um, is the presumption that the original library quote, if you will, or the, the amount that we're using for financing is potentially with acceleration going to be a smaller number because of the escalators that are built into the library project starting out a year from now. <clears throat> so it's it's possible that we would actually be spending less, which is what we'll be talking about momentarily. Um, so that that ultimately could mean that at the high at the point that you're having to borrow at the highest rates, you're borrowing less. Could right. be because yes, we're going to be uh, because of the grant money that we have. Um, there will be less borrowing for the library in fiscal 19, the one we're in now, than for the other buildings because we have a head start with the other money. So we'd only be borrowing about 1.6 million this year. So the bulk of their borrowing would be the following year, and, and put off after that. So you have time to make. Well, yes. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> you said it right. <laughs> no, I just want to make sure that that, that logic I is agree. <laughs> so, so again, we're not factoring any of that in right now. You're taking the existing um, 
projection, thank you. You know, projections as we believe them to be at the moment, and you're just taking those numbers and putting them in here. I, I, we're assuming that $3,786,292, which is the amount of local share that the town meeting authorized, yep. would be permanently financed in a bond issue in January 2021 for the library. Okay. We've assumed the voted amount for every building. Right. Okay. Regardless of whether they're bigger, smaller, later, sooner. Mm -hmm. okay. To be sound good to me. That seems like the most uh, accelerated. And well, you can say to be, but now you need to. Well, now we have to talk yeah, about the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not it would be frugal enough. And we yeah. want to set up another meeting for the 28th right. of um, November. Right. That's that's the only thing that we're we're looking for from you is that if we're going to be uh, we, we want to be ready to make sure we can get some of this borrowing out of the way in 18 so it doesn't impact 19. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean um, yes that leaves your option open. If you were not going to fast track the library we might wait on all the borrowing until March but there's still other reasons to borrow it from December and if you're open to that. Well I think that's where at least I think where David and I are coming from is we're not really sure if the only pressing issue you have is that you need to know if we're going to make that borrowing. It seems prudent to do it anyway regardless of the decision we make on the library. Right. And yeah I mean you might be paying okay. interest for a few months okay. and some. Yeah. Right. I mean it does mean that the borrowing in March, if the library is slower, could proceed through the Bureau of Accounts. In more, I think we'd make that, I, we'll reserve that judgment, but mm -hmm. it's more likely that that would be the case. If the library is faster, coming. the March issue will need to have the disclosure legal and uh, would be a little bit more complicated for the town to just and think, a little bit more expensive for the town. But the, I just think the potential downside is much less than waiting uh, you know, for next year and seeing what rates do, even if we decide to to wait on the library head until you know, or go I should say with the Don't slower schedule, schedule right. on the library. I think it's. Can you repeat? I'm sorry, what you just said about the March date, borrowing date in the library. Uh, that it will be slightly more expensive if. But I don't. I, th I, I stand by what I said before that it's not a big difference, but right. it is slightly more expensive okay. to proceed with uh, a faster library project simply because it would be the March borrowing would need to be larger, would require a legal opinion of bond council right. okay. uh, and a disclosure document yep. in order to that be marketable. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Something that we would have to occur at some point. Mm -hmm. So it would just yeah. need okay. just sooner. Yeah. I just didn't. Thank you. So would you have Ajita if we authorized you tonight to go ahead with the December bar? We talked about doing a, a November one. Joyce, you're, you're, you know, it's really it's really up to you. I know one reason we we're waiting is to make sure the decision went through next week. You don't, you know, we don't want to borrow money if there's well, a, you a sure, it would be contingent front. upon. Oh, yeah, sorry. the November 20th. On the assumption that all is well next week. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I thought we that was jumping the gun, but if you want to do a contingent vote, that would be fine. And get it out of the way. Yeah. So, so the next thing we would be we looking for you John's is not to actually sign us the tonight, papers. And Christian's yeah. not. So we December 5th. Minus two members. Just, no, uh, December 12th would be signed. Yeah, signing on December 12th. 12th. Oh, just signing on the 12th. Mm -hmm. Bids on the 6th. We have a. Uh, that would be maybe. Well, I have notified. We'd have to notify on the 28th, on 29th. Do the bidding on the 6th. Okay. Do the bidding on the 6th. We have a meeting on the 12th. And okay. we'll be sitting on the 20th. Yep. I make a motion to approve the 2B model, uh, borrowing contingent upon a approval of the site plan on November 20th by the planning board. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then we'll find out next week. It sounds good. Right. Now we get to talk about all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> not much to talk about except to say that, uh, you know, there's a lot of things yeah. that. Linda, uh, yeah. we have a grant document that also needs to be notarized. It's, uh, 
Okay, I won't be going anywhere. I'm going to just be done. Okay. Is it going to be done now? I think she has it. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll keep an eye out for that. It's okay. I'll stay up here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank Bert. you, David. And then the. Oh, she, I thought she was coming back. She, she'll, she's going next. She's got to do another she notary on another paper when it comes up. Okay. Patrick, did Hello, you can you uh, bring up the uh, water grant oh, uh, document so we can get those notarized? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 I'll keep it to myself. Uh -oh. oh, okay. Um, all right, so I suppose now you wanted to go into, um, we don't have, it was such a short notice for the building committee to be here. I know, Willie, you're here tonight, and uh, uh, it wasn't fair, I think, to them that at last week's meeting to give them such short notice. I know a majority of them go to the Legion dinners and that's where they are tonight. So um, unfortunately they're not with us to uh, elaborate. They did send some emails on um, their concerns about the senior center and the oil, the asbestos and whatever else they may find in there uh, as the building is being taken down. Uh, Wait, do you mean, the, I'm sorry, when you said building, do you mean the building committee. Oh, municipal, municipal building committee. Oh, municipal building building committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we only have, we only have one municipal building committee. <laughs> I, I didn't hear municipal, so I just was confused. No, I didn't say sorry that. About but that. there's all kinds. But I'm yeah. talking. I'm talking no, no, about. Sorry. I'm sorry. Ta talking about the municipal building committee. So, um, in all fairness to them for not being here, um, I think we need to give them more notice than a week or even you know a couple of days because I know other people have plans that they've already planned on. So. I don't think it was fair to, you know, pinpoint anybody and blame anybody for not notifying them because they've already had plans for this week anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, we can move forward. I think. Uh, do we want to go into the senior center and and um, see how we would? When you start the project, you're going to be, I mean, this is where it all gets a little bit tricky between the library and fast-tracking them and the seniors and moving them out of the building so you can demolish the senior center and move them someplace else for the time being. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration, which we haven't really delved into. We've touched on, but not um, formally um, done anything. So I guess that's that's where we're at. Whether or not we do fast track with the library, move, move the seniors someplace else, and what everybody's wish is at this point, and I think that you know is a bit of discussion. So are you saying you're not discussing that now? No, I, I'm asking you to discuss it. How? Oh, okay. How, how I'm sorry, I thought you said without the master. Did you want to? Well, we don't have them here to chime in on it. So yes, we have the library here. Yes, we have the senior center here, and we've heard from everybody on a weekly basis. But nobody has actually uh, touched in on you know what's going to actually happen. You have a so-called plan for the seniors to move to Most Holy Redeemer. We've had some conversation mm -hmm. with the priest on that. Mm -hmm. um, have the media to a good one. There's been some conversation on that. I um, so are we contemplating whether to do them both? Is it what we're going to talk about tonight whether to do them both at the same time or what? Because I'll just put my opinion out there. I think we should move them both forward at the same time and, and find the flex space that we need in, in order to make the senior centers programs work in the meantime and get them, get them moving. But um, I know that's going to create two moves for you guys, but um, I guess is there any showstoppers on your guys' end? No, um, there aren't any showstoppers on our end, um, but there needs to be a lot more discussion to make it happen well. Mm -hmm. um, there are just a couple of things that I'll mention that should be variables when we're talking about this scenario. 
Um, I don't, I'm not privy to any of the conversations insofar as what the cost of being over there is. I know when I went over and looked, um, Father Peter said because it is the property of the bishops that they have somebody in Springfield at the bishop's office that handles rentals and that that negotiation or renting um, would have to go through them. There was no, he had no clue what that would be. I can tell you that we do not have that money available in our budget because of how many times we've been put off in the ex escalation fees, even though the building has been reduced. Just a minute, Joanne. Wait a minute. Okay, just a minute. Um, so, so the cost of where renting, the cost of renting needs to be really looked into. I don't know what that cost is or how you're going to finance that. Um, the oil, I guess, is um, something that everybody needs to know about. I did have a conversation with Tim Nyhart this past week, a couple months ago, when the whole idea of moving early and going over there came up. I had emailed him and said, please put me on the agenda for the next municipal building committee meeting so we can start talking logistics because I haven't done this before. I want to know how long the process is going to take, what I need to do between now and then um, to, to do that. Um, I've started talking with um, my team there. We only have myself and one other full-time person. So deciding um, what to take with us isn't too difficult because basically we're a human service organization so all of our people files need to be available to us every day. Um, programming happens um, on a very transportable um, basis so I don't see that as a huge issue. Um, I was thinking of trying to find a way to have my outreach worker put in a couple hours every week extra over her 10 hours because she could delve through all those people files as a jump start and help us kind of get that process underway. I also need to talk with the um, interior designer of our architect firm to see what she was looking at budget wise for furnishings so that I can say yay or nay to anything in the building and then the whole process would need to anything other than that where's it going to go how long is that going to take to set up and get out of there so all of these logistical things need to happen I can't see me being able to be ready to do that by February um, but I'm not opposed to doing it when the snow melts. Um, I've gone over there. It's a fine space. We'll be able to have all of our programming over there um, and we'll actually have a summer with air conditioning while the new building's being built. So I'm not I'm I'm not opposed to that. Um, the Wi-Fi will need to be moved over and our number will need to get transferred over. You're going to want to talk about storage for any of the things that don't go over with us that we will be using in the next building. Um, so those are the immediate variables without sitting down with the Municipal Building Committee. I know there's a four month window between um, Tim's telling me there's a real lag in utility shutoff when they actually come over with the paperwork and you need to be ready. They could come over in a week from when you make that call or that could be three months. So that's something that also needs to be dealt with because when they do come over with that paper, you need to be ready to go because everything's getting shut off. So these are all really fine, need to be fine tuned if that scenario is being. And of course he threw the wrench out with like, well, you could be a month, you could be two months, you could be three months. Exactly. Of when mm -hmm. they could actually do any of these services for us. So right. Right. Be six months. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I mean. <laughs> but uh, if they come back early, let's say, you know, it could be six months, but if they come back early, that's it. It shuts yeah, it out shuts and out. then we're like out of business because we don't. Right. It's yeah. right. Could I just have. A, um, Jennifer and Linda, let's sign that for you so that you don't have to stay through. I'll put it right by David for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Is so it? If you could Who signs? You mm -hmm. sign there. Well, since you moved, did you have something as far as what you were talking about? Yeah, I wanted to mm -hmm. add something to what Suzanne was saying. One of the things we haven't taken an official vote on yet at the library, but 
we've all got, we've informally talked about it is that since it would save us so much money Thank you. there's no reason why we the trustees wouldn't take a vote to put money towards your rental costs like anything above and beyond mm -hmm. because you know when we're looking at building out later we're looking at about seven thousand dollars a week right. extra you know cost so why wouldn't the library would be to our advantage to help pay and defer some of those costs for the senior center so that's all i wanted to say well, that's that's my perspective on this is that if, if that seven thousand is true um, then i mean we're saving a year's worth of 52 times 7,000 whatever right. and then plus whatever else comes up in the meantime I, uh, so I don't know that we could actually take it out of the grant money but right. we have you know we have yeah. money we could take it out of and we think it would only be fair and we have to take an official vote but we've talked unofficially and everybody said that's really logical and I think the mm -hmm. building committee also talked about it the library building committee mm -hmm. so it, it's not something new or foreign to us it seems like the neighborly thing to do to have so could I just toss out I mean to me this is a classic this is um, project management so we what we're talking about is forget the actual buildings themselves but just a project getting everybody's head wrapped around everything that has to happen who needs to be involved who needs to do what and when what information we need to actually make a fully formed decision so when somebody at Dunkin Donuts says how much is this costing us you can actually answer the question um, so we we've hit pieces of this you know and I, I think like the big obstacles we've been able to remove in terms of pretty reasonable swing space plan it has to be executed but but the devil's in the in the details and it seems to to me to lend itself to having like a point person responsible for flushing this whole thing out um, and then that I'm looking at, at Phil right now too so <laughs> but you you so we have the two OPMs right we've got DA Sullivan and we've got um, Colliers on um, these projects, and then also on uh, the North Cathy substation. And I'm really worried about. I, w I want to do it, but I'm, I'm worried about not doing it right, and doing it right to me begs having some serious oversight. I mean, a part time select board is not going to be able to manage three projects of this significance. So, adding to that, just the question of. And Billy, you're wonderful, and so is Mark, right? Like, but at some point, does there need to be like a neutral town person? That's not a town name. person. Not a town like resident, no, like a, a representative clerk, clerk, clerk of, like, clerk like of the works town yeah. of this. You know, I Bill, don't know. Do you, Bill, do you want to yeah, chime in on that? Yes. Yeah, so, in terms of our contract with the town of Hadley, we are going to be present during construction. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be 40 hours a week? No. Uh, but on a job this size, generally speaking, we wouldn't propose to a town a 40-hour week clerk of the works because generally speaking, a job like this, it's not in the town budget to afford that. Right. Um, but in terms of construction logistics, you know, this senior center project going on, this library project going on all at once in the same site, it's been done before. I'm not overly concerned in terms of a coordination effort between two groups of contractors. It's, it, it's not a super foreign thing. The big thing I would bring up, and I think I emailed it to you, Molly, a little bit ago, is I wouldn't recommend setting up a bidding environment where you have these two projects competing against each other, meaning bidding at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to set up something where, you know, senior center bids and a couple months, three months later, the library bids, okay. Um, but the issue is you're not going to get a big size contractors on these jobs. You, it's just the job's not big enough for the big guys. So contractors of this size, sometimes if they have other work going on, they're only going to be able to bid on the senior center project, only be able to bid on the library project, only be able to, you know what I mean, because they only have so many guys. Mm -hmm. um, so if you set up at the same time, you may get great contractors that are going to choose this project over that one and so on. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you time it out right, maybe they see that and they go, oh, this is really appealing. I have this group of guys that are in Western Mass as well as this group of guys. These, well, let's attack the senior center project first and then this group of guys is going to be finished up this project. We'll have them do a lot. You know, uh, that'd be a lot more appealing to contractors than 
um, all at the same time, you, you're going to have the projects competing against each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, what, what so we would go out. Months? Were you talking about staggering? What were you talking about? Three months. Yeah, a few months. I mean, so the, the other issue is, so I'm saying all this, but like, for example, you may get contracted size such that that might not be enough. That's just what we have, you know. So, for example, when we were doing uh, reaching out to general contractors for the prequal process for the senior center project, you know, we prequaled X amount of GCs. You keep them in the loop as things are moving on with bid docs. Um, and it just so happened one of the prequal came back to me saying, "Hey, listen, um, we wanted to bid it, but the superintendent that we wanted on this project is at another project for the next eight months, and I don't want to do this job with some of the other folks that I have." So, you know, when you ask the question, what's the appropriate distance in terms of months? I don't know. I mean, ideally, it's, it's long enough where they're getting halfway through the senior center project, then, then they're bidding another project. That's ideal. I understand how we might not want to do that. Mm -hmm. So a couple months, three months, four, you know, but. What about the possibility of one of a contractor that wants both projects? Yeah, say a larger no, contractor that may want to do both of them. Well, even a contractor that predominantly does jobs this size, he might have a current work capacity where he would love to see the scenario where he bids the senior center, attacks it hard, and then a couple months later goes after the library. It's just, it's, it's a timing thing um, in terms of these contractors that are going to go after these jobs, how busy are they at the time? That's really what it comes yeah. down to. Couldn't the, bid, couldn't the bid documents allow some flexibility and when they start the work? Well, I, I think as soon as we know next week what our answer is, we can go out to bid for the senior center. Well, we're going to... January. Yeah. But I so mean, that'll be the first yeah. to go out. Right. So after next, so say next week we're good to go, we're successful. Um, for the next, you know, month plus after that, they're going to be revising the bid docs, senior mm -hmm. center. Yeah. Um, and then we, we re-advertise... Uh, early slash mid January and, and go through the bid process, um, but you know to speak to his question, yeah, I mean technically speaking, could a could a library project indicate in the contract docs um, construction to start and that date be two months later? I mean, is that common? No, but I mean, could you do it? Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jane, I was I thought I was hearing a different thing from the board, which was a clerk of the works that would oversee the process of getting to the contract. That's what I'm that's talking about. Yeah, 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 up until the point where up until, up up until yeah. the shovel's in the ground, we've got to get us moved, we've got to get Hadley Media moved, we've got to make all these other arrangements, and that's what you're looking for a third party to do. Yeah, I don't Where's the money going to come for for that? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Just so another, 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 another cost of, of uh, doing that. So we that. do, Collier's does move services, management services all the time. So, I mean, if you need assistance, you know, under our current contract, we can put as much time into it as we can and help you out. Yeah. That's not a problem. To coordinate it. Yeah, to coordinate, facilitate it. Mm -hmm. Middle man, you know. Just okay. let me know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, I, I'm extremely worried about yeah. not having that level it, of coordination. It's a process. Too much money, uh, too many moving parts. Somebody actually has to put together a flow chart, you know, of when yeah. things have to happen. Basically yeah, like, like this, that, except it's for the move. Yeah. Not for the construction of the buildings, but for the yeah. move. This is something right. So how does the rest of the board feel? I mean, are, is, are you guys going to want to consume at the same time if it's doable, or are you, are you not for that? Or you well, I think we part? should take into consideration Phil's thing about not bidding them at the same time, but going one one for one. Um, There's still going to be an overlap of construction. Yeah. And we always anticipated that. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, way back when, before we, you know, reduced the size of the building, we had in our bid docs, um, you know, showing, hey, FYI, GC for Senior Center, when you're two-thirds through construction, this project's going to start. You're going to have to coordinate with that mm -hmm. library GC. So mm -hmm. um, we were anticipating that, not you know, to the point where it might happen you know, in terms of all at once, but. You know, I, one thing I'd like is, and I know um, Mark Sullivan and, and Phil O'Brien couldn't be here tonight, same thing, just with a short notice, so they had other commitments tonight. But Phil, you you and, and Mark in the past have gotten your heads together and kind of come up with a coordinated response 
I mean, I would love for you guys to talk to each other and then maybe come back and say, you can do A, B, or C, similar yeah. to what we did on the funding side. Okay. Is that? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, rel well, rel okay to relative to bidding schedule, is that what you're referring to in well, terms of options? Yeah, right. Right. Exactly, exactly. Because I know that, you know, when we were in the library building committee meetings with Mark there, he kind of ran us through multiple scenarios. Yep. Um, could you think you and he could get together before our December 5th meeting? Yeah, we can set up a call. Yeah, we can set each other on November 20th. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> you could come in on, on that day. Yeah. Maybe we could see what we need to coordinate um, between the two buildings with the OPMs. Yeah. And uh, at that time, we'll put out. Jennifer, could you notify the uh, building co uh, municipal building committee to come to that meeting also? To December 5th. Meeting? December 5th. Yeah. Yes. We can send them an email tomorrow, please. Yes. Thank you. And then we will continue that. Thank you. Go That's that way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, Phil, maybe when you and Mark are talking to, um, it would be helpful just to have some bullet points about the potential coordination issues that could come up. Yeah. Pre-construction or construction? Both. 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 Yeah. Right. Both. But pre-construction, there that's more M master M C than costs. Yeah, I, but I'm thinking in terms of yeah, like in terms of moving people around and things, they'll have more of a concern at NBC than we would now. But I think the I think the way the yeah, original schedule was laid out before yeah, things got yes. delayed, yes. doing it in a linear fashion. Phil was done, Mark shows up, hey, how's it going? And then he starts, you know, and yeah. so yep. there's a, you know, whether it's a direct overlap or it's staggered for a few months or whatever, there's going to be a lot more coordinating. Yep. And I'm not even know what time. issues we're going to have because if we decide we're going to move forward with an accelerated schedule, then we need to go talk to the church. And then we need and well, to that's what I was just going to yeah. say. Yeah. We don't, does any, have, have you had any discussions, David, with? them about cost or no I've been waiting to see whether the, the space, space was suitable for you mm -hmm. um, and I also wanted to see what the planning board had to say well I think once next week is off we can hit the okay. ground running on it and okay. start really forging Taking forward a look at yes how long that process is going to take and the steps necessary yeah mm -hmm. And again, we'll have everybody here back on the fifth just to uh, coordinate things moving forward. Okay. Okay. Super. All right, we're right on time for seven o'clock. Do you need us to send for a later report on? I don't think so. I think we we I think we've had enough <laughs> for tonight. That's probably <laughs> your father say that because we the parishioners that paid Jane, was there anything else that we needed to know? Center. That is Jane, under the auspices of the Was there anything else we needed to okay, know tonight? I, uh, yeah. We have all our I don't know what to say to that. That's yeah. just what I was told. <laughs> yeah. All right. That might be some of his reasons for coming to Hadley. Yeah, no. I don't You're know. having, are you Could we have the rest of the DPW committee?
that it? Are we back? <laughs> We're tied. I've got a tie on. Uh, welcome. I guess the DPW search committee has uh, a nomination for us tonight. Uh, and who would like to do the presentation? David. 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 Um, so the committee, we work, I would say, fairly quickly. We got, we got the uh, interviews out of, way, out of the way, did uh, several interviews, and uh, second round of interviews. And we'd like to make the uh, unanimous recommendation that uh, Christopher Oakford is, uh, is hired. Um, Christopher has a extensive background in uh, public works and uh, adult education and several other uh, great experiences that will be a, an asset to the town of Hadley. Uh, his most recent experience was in uh, Maynard, that's correct. And um, so uh, this is Mr. Oakford sitting, sitting back here. Good and, evening. Uh, he's. Uh, if his appointment is approved, uh, he plans to move to the area and uh, get started, hit the ground running. So um, I forwarded you the resume, so you've probably seen all that. And I don't know if uh, Hank or Marlo, if you guys wanted to say anything as far as, uh, or Molly. <laughs> so. Tell us about the process or how. Uh, well, I, I think as we went through the process, uh, through the, the question and answer sessions, um, my experience was that it became apparent to me uh, that he has an extensive background and experience. Um, and as I talked about three months ago with all the reports and files lined up on my desk, um, I think that coupled with the, the interview process, I think Mr. Okafor can probably take them reports and, and move them forward. I think that was my big takeaway. Okay. Great. I, I agree with that and, and I also feel that he's, he's the man who take us forward in, in Hadley and, and build on our DPW. Okay. Great. And one thing I would just add to, um, as part of the process, is uh, Sharon Gifford was a member of the committee. Obviously, um, he would be working very closely with, with Sharon. And also had the opportunity to go down and visit the, um, the DPW facilities um, <laughs> before <laughs> Uh, he came to his second interview. Before um, he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the good news is he came to the interview. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and also you spent a little bit of time with Bill Kelly as yes. well. And um, both Sharon and Bill, you know, <coughs> expressed tremendous comfort with uh, Mr. Oakford. I will say is uh, one thing I think the committee loved <coughs> in general was the fact that his, his knowledge and experience was up to date. Um, we had some trouble finding recent experience and candidates and candidates that were up to date on current regulations and you know, things like MS4 and you know, things like that. And could you just tell our viewers at home <coughs> licenses or anything else that you might have? Um, does he have water licenses and license things of those yeah. natures? I have the Mitri certified through warning. I'm an infrastructure inspector, construction inspector. Mm -hmm. I also have a um, wide knowledge of, uh, of um, solid waste and recycling. I'm a recycling coordinator. I was a recycling coordinator in uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. licensed by the state of Connecticut. So. Mm -hmm. In terms of water, I have <coughs> water on water. I have water on sewer, um, but I don't have the license for water. Okay. But I do have wide knowledge of water. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Just if you'd like to. Yeah. Would, would you like to say anything? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we knew you would. So. <laughs> I just want to, Madam Chair, I just want to thank the, the search committee and also the select board for giving me the opportunity to come before the board tonight. Um, the only thing I need to say is that uh, if I'm given the opportunity to, I, I'm not. I'm a quick learner. I have enough experience to start the job right away. I have. I tend to. I have been in. It's a privilege to serve. I've served community like Hadley, and so I have an idea and experience what the board will expect from somebody like me. Thank okay. you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.
entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to appoint uh, Mr. Okafor as DPW uh, director, contingent upon uh, background investigation and uh, successful contract negotiations. Okay. Second motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. Looking forward to working with you. Thanks. Okay. Randy, what are we doing tonight? What are we doing tonight? <laughs> you have something for exotic auto? Exotic auto. Yes, I do for the consent agenda. Yes, I do. Alrighty. Well, you're on the first of the list there. I mean, I guess we'll have to take that out of the consent agenda. Um, we have, did you want to vote on anything else on the consent agenda and just take that one out? Mm -hmm. That's fine with it. So we have. Um, I don't have anything else to. Yeah. Huh? I have a request. Yeah, every downstairs looks good. Okay. Jennifer, I have a request for uh, the Stony Brook cider for the um, farmers winery farmers market permit. Mm -hmm. um, part of the requirements is that we have a, a certificate from the MDAR, but the person who issues those certificates has been on the office for a week and they'll be back next week. So I'm asking you to make that license contingent upon us receiving the certificate from the Mass Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And also we have someone here from Stony Brook Cider, if you would like to see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can take it out or leave it in? Or, uh, Whatever you want to do. If you want to do contingent. <coughs> leave it in with the contingency. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Are you going to read this? I can. Well, actually, I don't know why I don't have it like you have it. Oh. I don't have that. You don't have that? <coughs> I have that. Executive, whoops. Let me get that back there. I have um, farmer's market. Can you scroll up? Yeah, you scroll up to it. Oh there yeah, there we go. There we, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late, you know. <laughs> Let's see, September it's ten after seven. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it just felt like it should be later. I'm just not sure why tonight. Um, the minutes for September fifth, two thousand eighteen. Um, the American Liege easement, which we have signed and it's been notarized. Uh, one day liquor license for type top of the campus. Faculty and staff appreciation night. Reception for Basketball Champion Center, December 11th. And then we have the Stony Brook Center, South Hadley, to sell the Amherst Winter Market held at the Hampshire Mall, eight alternate weeks starting in, on December 1st, 2018. And that will be with a contingency. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And then we will take up the exotic auto sales and repairs. Okay. And what is your presentation tonight? What is my presentation? <laughs> I have some paper, some plans to and, put before and you. And just tell people where this yeah, is I will, uh, located. Yeah, I'll <laughs> give you the paperwork and then I'll describe what's happening. So okay. That It'll be quieter than the planning board meeting. So Nobody <laughs> is confused. Thank God I started out that way, didn't I? Huh? I'm more curious about what you're building out. In the we can get to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm here representing Exotic Automotive Service and Sales. Mr. Paul Naris is the proposed owner of said building. This is what used to be in West Coast Garage on the corner of yeah. River Drive and Cummins Road. Yeah. There is an existing car dealership there. I believe it was called Riverside Auto Sales. Jack Kirschless, who passed away uh, a year and some time ago, he had a license 
a, a class two dealer's license for 10 cars. Mm -hmm. Mr. Naris wants to, is here tonight to get a used car dealer's license. We have been before the planning board. The plan you see in front of you is what I got approved, site plan approval with the planning board. So the issue tonight is the number of cars that we, we want to apply for a license for. There was, as I said, there's a license existing <coughs> for 10 cars, and Paul would like to continue that. Just so you're aware, on this plan, uh, over on Cummins Roadside, you see cars for sale, one through five, cars for repair, six through 10. Planning board has said, we don't care what the cars are for, as long as there are no more than 10 cars in that spot. So. There could be 10 repair cars there. Right, 10 repair cars, 10 for sale cars, any combination thereof. Just no more than 10 cars there. Mm -hmm. So, just to make things simple, if things you know change in the future right now, he thinks that he might want to sell five cars, but if the repairs go bad and the sales are good, uh, if, if we have it lined up for 10, then he doesn't have to come back before the board. And again, we are limited to the number of cars that can go on the site. Mm -hmm. And the garage is staying the same? Mm -hmm. And the house is not going anywhere? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Nothing's going to change on the outside. That would have had to be shown on this plan if before the planning board they would have been very concerned about that. The uh, we have a basically it's a grandfathered pre-existing non-conforming. So are they good? Are you you're going to be putting green space along Cummins Road yes. area, yeah, the which isn't now. It's it's black space black. right now. <laughs> it is yes. It's okay. black top space. The, the yeah. concern was that people are cutting the corner. So mm -hmm. the planning board wanted something to prevent that. So when spring comes, there'll be a green space created. There'll be a sign there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that would curtail people from cutting across, but one never knows. <laughs> Uh, what kind of cars are you going to focus on? Are you, are you gonna make some models, new stuff, old stuff, the uh, junkyard, no, or is it? No, no, no. It'll be like three year old cars. Okay. We'll probably buy cars off lease. Okay. So, uh, Japanese, American, German, and Italian cars. Was Exotic Auto on Route 9 before? No. It's, it is there now. It is there now. Okay. It's yes. going to stay there. Yeah. It's going to stay oh, there. So yes. you're a second location? Yeah, yes. there's a space problem over here. So mm -hmm. In case nobody noticed. <laughs> is, is, that there, uh, is there a camper park in front of that garage right now? Is that yours or is that the other owner? No, that's the other owner. Okay. okay. Right. It's currently gone. Okay. Right. Okay, so and are you renting this property? I'm no, I don't. Kirk's, you own, he you will. bought it from Kirk's He doesn't own it yet. Okay. Oh, this one, yes. This will buy it. You're going to buy it? Yes. Okay. It's, it, it, it's uh, proposing to buy it on the 16th. He's just trying to get all his permits lined up before so he then on the line. Are we going to issue a permit before he purchases the property, or is it going to be contingent? Um, or is he going to actually have... I mean, I'm, there's a little bit of a gray area there about whether or not... Yeah, I'm not sure about <coughs> the legality of it. I'm sure that you can issue it contingent upon him purchasing the property because without him purchasing the property the, the license is no good to him anyhow. Yeah, you, Correct. You've done this before. <coughs> you know, the project under development. Yeah. I just wanted to be sure they were, yeah. we were all No, there's no, no problem. The he doesn't page. intend to sell cars t tomorrow. He just wants well, again get it, got all his ducks lined up. It will take me like two, three months to get the property back. Sure. Uh, it's a lot of repairs. Mm -hmm. And then once I get everything going then I'll come back to Jennifer and because she needs the work, workers' comp and all that, so I give all the certificates, mm -hmm. sure. and then she she issue uh, the license. Okay. So three four months I, I need. Okay. If I have to okay. So your your other location looks good. Um, I just want to caution that it's not Route Nine, so yeah. it, you know appearances matter, and oh, it's yes. a residential neighborhood for the most part. Yes. So yeah. no, with all respect to the neighbors, I mean uh, there's one lady across. And once we go through this process, I'm going to go down to her and ask her about the lights because she was concerned about the lights. Yeah. So I'll ask her what kind of lights uh, she would like to, you know, so it doesn't bother her. Mm -hmm. right. But I'll work with the neighbors. I live there, so. Right. I was going to say, you're a neighbor yourself. Yeah. 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 For, for the benefit of the select board, we went through all this stuff with the planning board. Mm -hmm. we, there, was, there were abutters there that voiced their concerns, mm -hmm. and that's how we ended up with 
the plan that we have. Uh, if any of you remember Lesco's, that was just completely covered with cars and who knows what, and, and they were out in, in 47, and that was a big concern as well, that the cars don't park in 47. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to mark off the parking lot where they can and cannot park so that there shouldn't be an issue. And Paul's been made aware, not only by the planning board and the select board and the neighbors, that if he doesn't behave himself, he's going to be in big trouble. And he's willing to take on the challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, entertain a motion. I think a motion to approve the permit uh, contingent upon the successful purchase of the property. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck to you. To answer your question, Molly, I'm building a garage uh, and put some of my stuff in, and then I may, if I, I, I uh, got a lot of interest from contractors and people looking for space, mm -hmm. so I may utilize part of it for that, but I have to go before the planning board to get into <laughs> it before I can do that. Yeah. So that's where that's at right now. And I'm trying to get it done before it snows, but I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> you mean by Thursday? Yeah. Right. <laughs> do, you, do you need this extra one back? Right? No, if you don't want it, I'll be happy to take it. If you want one for the files? That's you want one? Or to have one. All right, I'll give one to David. And we'll all right, thank you all very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Seven fifteen. Land license public hearing. Russell Street Hospitality. Hi. Here it is. Come on up. So they bring plans to already in the ground, but it's for three uh, propane tanks. We're over um, the normal unpermitted limit. Um, so it's three. 2,000 gallon tanks that are in the ground that have a special permit. And where is this going to be located? At 340 Russell Street, the Homewood Suites building that's being built right now. Okay. So and you, how about all your permits and things and have this gone before the fire chief? Yes. My yeah. yeah. Okay. Just want to be sure. So they're going to be two 2,000 gallon tanks. There's 4,000 yeah. gallons on here. Yeah. Yes, so two 2,000 yeah, gallon sorry. tanks. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion? Yeah, make a motion to, to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All set? Huh? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if it was Chardoule, we would have had further discussion. That's why he sends me. That's right. <laughs> I'm the cuter one. <laughs> Get to less trouble. All right, tax, it's only the three of us. Tax classification, public hearing. Whoop, a little That's early. Yeah, I can't do that. Uh, Hadley Housing Authority appointment. A little early. Richard. Oh, Richard hasn't shown up. Is he yet. coming? Oh, is he coming? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that would make sense that he would be here. <laughs> Not just you two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Fire Chief Contract um, submitted a letter. Mm -hmm. And so that was just intent of notice. Um, I told him he didn't have to be here tonight for that. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we had to do this six months out ahead of time to uh, notify him and notify us of his intent. And so mm -hmm. that's where we are. Any questions? The only thing I was just in the contract that talks about um, the annual performance review. Mm -hmm. We've done it. I think we did it last year. We didn't do one this year. Yeah, it's, I, was just, I was just reading through it just to refresh my memory. And it says... There was one last year, right? We did them on... Well, the we, uh, we did them on the chief. We, last uh, year we presented goals and objectives, but there wasn't, there, was no a, performance well, there wasn't a performance review for any of the contracted employees. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just, yeah, it's in the contract. We shouldn't mm -hmm. plan them. Well, it's so probably in all of their contracts. We haven't done anybody's. I did the performance things last year, like you said. But we did we did yours. We did your evaluation. Yeah, we did, did, did yours? Yeah. Uh, actually, we did, and we did Mike Mason. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is that the same as the goals and objectives? Or no, no, at these are actual. How did we self evaluations? How do we not do the chiefs last year? How did that slip by us? Well, we can still do it now. So maybe you want to dig out one of those evaluation papers for all of us. Well, since the board should review and evaluate the chief every year from the date of appointment, mm -hmm. should be based on the goals and objectives jointly agreed upon. Mm -hmm. So I guess we would need a list of goals and objectives from last year for the fire chief and um, an evaluation form. And I don't know what the time frame on that will be, maybe the second meeting of um, December. So his current contract is until June 30th. Oh, so we right. need, so yeah. maybe give people a little extra time on that then to get the goals and um, objectives mm -hmm. and then look at the evaluation uh, form yeah. and set it for January, February. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joyce? Yes. Excuse me. I was just informed that Richie doesn't have to be here, but as long as the two of us are here, we can uh, vote for him. And, uh, well, did, he, did he want to be here? I, I don't think he's not going. I told him. Oh. <laughs> I told him seven forty-five. Just I had a long tax classification hearing with last. Yeah. So I told him seven forty-five, but they posted the Hadley Housing Authority posted for six p.m. and we have his letter of interest. Mm -hmm. So anytime y'all would like to take the vote, you can technically take the vote without him being present. Okay. Maybe Marlo's here for public comments. I don't know. Were you here for public comment? <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> did you want to stay? Thank you for coming. Yeah, I, well, uh, just one quick note. Um, I appreciated the, uh, the invite to be on the search committee. Um, I think we all did a great job. Um, and I wish uh, Chris over for the best. Um, he does have my contact information. So if I can be of any help in the transition, uh, I told him to reach out to me if it moves forward. Yeah. Thank you. Good. How's your job going? Good. Very good. Good. Not crazy as anywhere, but good. <laughs> I see a lot of DPW activity up in Greenfield these days. Yeah, we got a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be moving in across the street soon, I think. Mm -hmm. In the next couple, three weeks. So. Very good. That things are going well for you. Mm -hmm. I'll okay. <laughs> we know you know how to find us too. We have yeah. your we have your number still. <laughs> okay. So Council meetings are on Tuesday night, so yeah. I still might be looking at that on Wednesday night. <laughs> All right. So housing Hadley Housing Authority appointment. Then we can do that. We have the um, a vacancy, and we just have one or two. Two vacancies. Two right? vacancies. Yeah, Second one's a resident, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, he'll be Richie. He'll be taking over uh, Terry Yusko's position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do you want to? Richie has uh, submitted a letter of an interest to being on the housing authority. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. yeah. We have it here. Yeah, right oh, here. Have it there? Oh, right oh, right in front of us. It's short and sweet. I like these. I, Rich yeah. Whitkus, am interested about being a board member for the Hadley Housing Authority. Signed, Rich Whitkus. <laughs> it's a man of few words. We, we hope his term is not as short and sweet as that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll see. a motion to uh, appoint uh, Richie Whitkus as a uh, board member for the housing, Hadley Housing Authority. Second. All right. All in favor? Roll call vote. Oh, Phil. Just yes. Until April Keegan. Election. Chunglo. Yes. Until the Raleigh. April. Yes. Just until the oh, April the appointment election. is until the April yeah. election. Just for clarification. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just appointed, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yusko, how do you vote? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I echo. Aye, aye. It's a roll call vote. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Proper way. You got to. Is that a yes? yes. Okay, right. that's all Thank we're you. looking for. Thank you. <laughs> See, this wasn't as simple as his letter, was it? No. <laughs> okay. 
ですけど Meeting schedule, but nobody else is here.、Um, I, I don't think it's g o n n a I don't even have a calendar for next year. Yeah.、Um, didn't we do some of that the last time? Yeah, you did January, but、uh, it was February and March. <laughs> do as well. Just s i t i n I gotta go、oh, get、yeah. another planner, is what I gotta do. Okay. You want to put this off until we've got the well, we did February.、Year. We did 6 and 20 in February. Where were you? Where was I? I have those. I have the 9 and the 23 on January, and I have 6 and 20 on、uh, February. All right. Can we throw we, February 13th in there for good measure? Why?、Uh, deadline for the annual town meeting articles. Also, if we have to have three of them. Huh? <laughs> that was a Valentine's Day last year. Is the 20th during school vacation? You just travel a lot. Well, we could just do two meetings. In, in the backyard. We could just do two meetings in February, the 6th and the 13th, if we don't want to do the 20th.、Uh, she was trying to warm out at the、um, March meeting. She, was trying、oh. to, she, she wanted to take a long vacation. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Then, no, I, I don't have any issues with any of those dates. Okay. All right, so then we'll look at March later on. So, three meetings in February, two. You want to go for two or three? What do we need? Do we need anything extra? Well, let's do two. Let's do the first two. And if we need to put one on on the third, yeah, we can. So it will be, you know, that dastardly budget. I think it'll, it'll come <laughs> along. Oh, it's just sure. That's right. Yeah. So the second and the 13th or 20th is not going to be scheduled for now. Right. Okay. So let's do.、Um, 7 30. 7 30. Okay, let's do the tax classification hearing.、Uh, last week we were presented by Dan Zadona、um, and the assessors on the pros and cons of、uh, yes,、uh, a single rate or、uh, a split rate. And they did a presentation for us, and if we Have all heard what we want to do? Does anybody have any motion for tonight? Do you have any further discussion?、Um, I make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the、uh, assistant assessor on this.、Okay. And、we'll、that is? To stay with a single. Thank you. To stay <laughs> with a single. I'm trying to put something in my calendar <laughs> and I can. There are too many steps, it's ridiculous.、Um, and、uh, stay with a single. Single rate system. Okay. 1236. 1236 for now.、Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Single, single tax rate. All right. Okay.、Um, We have something for you to sign on that one. We do. Tax classification. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it a lot? No, it's just a couple of things. Do you have that folder? Do I have your folder? The yellow folder? No, I didn't bring it up. Please、no. excuse me. All right. All right.、Um, New Connecticut River Stormwater Committee, MOA. This is、uh, whether we want to continue our membership in the Connecticut River Stormwater Committee、uh, hosted by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. This is something that Marlo and I worked on. Back when MS4 was、uh, new and different,、um, the idea is that we would get a bunch of towns together to interpret, the, come up with a consensus of how to interpret the new regulations, apply for grants jointly, do, to take advantage of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for some of the、uh, boilerplate、uh, work that would have to be 
done to comply with the new regulations. And uh, so we, it's time to renew our mem membership with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd recommend that we proceed with the, the, the committee given that we have a change of leadership here and the MS4 does turn along and we have some things to do in the next fiscal year. And uh, Marla, were you just sitting you were a representative on this committee, right? Yes, You're whenever one of us could make it or both. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, you know, if, if I'm going to speak just for a minute. No, um, please. The, you know, we are under contract with, with CEI to help us through the MS4, but there will be a lot of, there is a lot of good knowledge that comes out of these meetings when we attend them. So um, I would certainly, I, I would concur with David, I would recommend staying aboard with, with the change of leadership, um, even though we got a consultant from that will be able to guide the individual also. I think it should be behooved for another year. Does it cost us anything to be part of it? I believe it's $2,000 per year. But there's a lot of information given. There's a lot of work done for us. A lot of, sometimes you get a lot of information ahead of, out ahead, ahead of you know, consultant firms with things that are happening with that program. So, direct contact with the communication. So. Okay, I'll make, I'll make a motion that we continue our participation in the MS4 committee. Thank you. Second. Okay. And you feel like Chris is up, would be up to date on it? He said he did was uh, familiar with MS4. Yeah, he's just going to be have to get acclimated to our permanent area and what, what's going to be required here because different permanent areas okay. will require different testing and whatnot. Okay. And, and it is in the budget. No, I, I messed up. Oh, okay. Sign up the top, please. Oh, I see. And next, <laughs> the next page, too, please. Second. And not, it was budgeted. Okay. Yeah, you're lucky you don't have MS4 up in Greenfield. No, but <laughs> we've got a much larger, older, separated sewer and drain system that is highly being watched by for ion. So oh, yeah. we've got our own. So you don't have it because you're not along the river? Is that why? or is It just it didn't make the permit this time around. Yeah, no, nothing in Franklin County. Yeah. But there's the other side of MS4, the INI, which we proved was pretty good here, meaning lacking thereof. But we, we've got to deal with some INI in the field. So. Is there a motion? Yeah. Is there a motion to approve the motion? Is there a motion made and yeah. seconded? For what? Yeah, I made it to approve it. Yeah, we did. Second that motion. Yeah. I missed that. Sorry. Did we go? Oh, I didn't hear see all in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thought I did. <laughs> I think you asked me about it. <laughs> Just Sorry, I only should have missed it. <laughs> Someone's like, you distracted me, Marlo. Oh, we called on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, I think the only thing left is the. Uh, Town Administrator Report. And there's not a whole lot that's different between this week and last week. Um, you, we worked an awful lot on the numbers for the financing for the projects. You've heard all about that. Uh, Jennifer has been working uh, very hard on the website uh, project uh, redesign and uh, she's got uh, pages being reviewed by the department heads. Uh, she has a training scheduled for tomorrow both during the daytime for department heads and at nighttime for the boards and committees. And we're hoping for a launch date of January 2nd for the new website. Great. Um, I've already talked about DPW, search committee. Um, <coughs> special election, just a reminder for everybody that we do have a special election coming up on December 18th. One is for the dump truck to be borrowed for five years and the tax impact on the average single family home is six dollars thirty four cents per year for five years and then Hopkins Academy kitchen equipment replacement again borrowing for four five years tax impact is expected to be four dollars and eighteen cents per year and that's about it okay any uh, news that Hartbrook School Holiday Fair, it looks like on November 17th. Yeah. Uh, Hadley Festival of Lights on November 24th. And you already said the special election. 
And don't forget the Hadley Mother's, Mother's Club. Club. And Mother's Club this Saturday, Saturday Crafts mm-hmm. Fair, 9 to 4, 9 to 5, 9 to 4, I think. You know, it starts at 9. Yeah, I don't remember it's right. I think it's 4, but. That sounds right. Yeah. Prior to yeah. I've got one question on the, mm-hmm. if we could go back to the meetings for a minute. We have uh, February 2nd on here, which according to my calendar is a Saturday. Uh, can't be February 2nd. Probably a typo. Oh yeah, I don't have. Yeah, I have February 6th. That's circle for my hair on mine, so I don't know how you got that one. The hair day. Should it be February 6th? 6th. 6th. 6th and 13th. Any other announcements this evening? Not really an announcement, but just um, information sharing. So David and I are going to be meeting. On the no, two, two weeks. Two weeks. After Thanksgiving, we're going over to meet um, with the IT director in mm-hmm. Northampton mm-hmm. Uh, about the possibility of doing something with that IT grant. Um, so we'll get up- updated information because everything that I have learned previously is somewhat mm-hmm. stale at this point. So. We'll see if that still is a viable option for um, kind of content management system that they can post for us. Okay. Right. The deadline for that grant is uh, February 15th, so we're working on this well in advance of that. Yeah. So for some reason, this doesn't seem viable. We can other come up with another either. idea. Okay. All right. I just have three condolences this evening. I have uh, Helen O'Brien, who's lived in town for 50 years, and I have Fanny C. Eli, who was the daughter of the late Sylvia Barrett. Um, uh, Sylvia's husband, Dave, still lives in town. And um, today there was Stephen Bristol, who was a lifelong uh, resident of Hadley. So condolences to all of their families and friends from the select board. And Can I say thank you to um, Dr. McKenzie and Chief Mason and Chief Spank Nabel? Mm-hmm for their uh, excellent communication with uh, the, not only the select board, but with uh, parents and other people in town as well. So. Uh, they do do a good job on that. We did have an incident in town, and I think with all the robocalls and things that went out today, most townspeople were aware of that. They had a uh, lockdown at uh, the elementary school and the high school. and. Um, until it was cleared and everything was fine. They uh, did a great job with their presence and keeping everybody calm and checking things out. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Entertain emotion. Oh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have mm-hmm. a nice holiday next week. Okay. And you as well. And you as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Turkey Day. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye.